Hello there. How are you, Christy and Alonzo and Matt? We've got one more for you. It's been a jam-packed day. We're going to talk about a documentary that's out this week called The Biggest Little Farm. And The Biggest Little Farm is just north of here, kind of more park-ish. If you right. go up the 101. Right, about an hour away. Uh, uh, right, mm-hmm. so this couple, uh, one of them is a uh, personal cook, personal chef. Uh, the other one is a... Um, cameraman slash documentary filmmaker. Um, he'd worked on some, I think like discovery type shows. Uh, one of the shows he was doing, uh, involved going to someone's house who had like 200 dogs, hundred dogs, a lot of dogs and they rescue a dog. It was a hoarder. Yeah. Somebody was hoarding dogs. Um, and so they rescue this dog, uh, Todd and Todd is, you know, a medium sized shepherdish looking mutt, muddish type dog. Uh, and barks all day in their apartment, so they have to move out. Um, they get evicted, and they decide, oh, you know what? We're going to go open a farm and do the thing we always wanted to do and see if you can do a, a, a you know, kind of live in harmony with nature farm. And, and they spend seven years doing that. Um, they get some expert who comes in and says, all right, here's what you got to do and do all this diverse, you know, biodiversity, and here's how it'll work. And, uh, you know, it's one problem after another. And, you know, good and, and okay. Like, uh, you know, my, this is <laughs> an interesting, review, okay. <laughs> well, you know, it, it, my, my frustration with this movie is that, you know, the best documentaries will catch you emotionally as well as teach you something. And this movie I'd say probably has 60 or 70% of the education down. Um, it never got me really emotionally. Like it's very, it's very twee. Like it's Twee very, is a really uh, good word for it because um, it is like wall to wall voiceover. John right. explaining to us what we're seeing in front of our right. own eyes, and then further explaining it to us in these little animated interludes. Right. And um, of course, the animals are adorable. Baby pigs. I mean, come right. on, how do right. you not love piglets? But the word you used at one point last night, as we were talking about it, was sanctimonious. It is and- smug and sanctimonious as much. And it's totally falsely modest because as much right. as the tone of the voiceover is, wow, this was a massive undertaking and we were in over our heads and we were learning on the job. Eventually that gives way to, we've got this nature thing nailed down. We've got it figured out. I, and we're so much better than everybody because we gave it all up to take this challenge and, and go on this journey. And I didn't and, get so much of that. So I, what I got more of was... It, you know, where I felt like it was a bit disingenuous was, you know, they talk about getting investors and they go out and they get 200 acres of land and they do all the, you know, first of all, they get a, so there's so much work, mm-hmm. right. And, and lest we and look like people who are farmers will absolutely tell you like, you know, farmers work from sun up to sundown because running a farm is a lot of goddamn work. It's why we have daylight it's, saving time. Right. I mean, it's, it's. <laughs> And one of the things this movie somewhat glosses over is how much investment they actually had to get, right? And I read a couple of news stories and some interviews with with the subject and and writer John or director John John, Chester. John Chester. His wife is Molly. You know, when he he kind of there's a throwaway quote in one of the news articles. He's like, you know, when we talk about investment, we're talking about millions, and no lie, like they had to have spent millions on this, right? Like they've got to they buy this farm that's an apricot farm and they have first, you know, one of the first things they do is they come in with a backhoe and pull all the trees down because the soil is so dry and so dead. And so, you know, then they got to, they plant a bunch of different trees, you know, like dozens of varieties of, of trees and a bunch of, uh, you know, cover crop, um, you know, and they buy a bunch of livestock, you know, they, they buy some, you know, they buy some cattle, they buy a bunch of sheep, they buy a bunch of baby chicks, which, you know, all cute, but like Mm. that stuff costs money. Right. And they end up, you know, they hire some people, they bring in, you know, more what, I don't know where it's either volunteers or people with jobs. Like this is a, this is an, this is a business. Like this is not somebody just going into this, you know, I bring all that up because the movie doesn't really, it kind of glosses all that over. Like they say like, Oh, we put out an, you know, we put out the call that we wanted help and we were amazed how many people showed up. 
Right. Well, I I can only imagine that they were paying those people. Also, they they, yeah. Also, they go to a farmers market quite frequently, and and they're really excited because the eggs sell out right. really fast. Like the eggs are great, and they sell out really fast. Like at one point, you see an egg within an egg right. in this movie. But yeah, there's no there's no uh, there's no substantive sense as right. to what's happening with them financially. One yeah. of the things that this movie does do well, and it's one of the few things it does well, is it shows how you know if you have the right elements in place. There is this cycle that works and, and that you can live off, you know, when they talk about the snails being an issue and, and the solve for that, like all of the, you know, one of the things he keeps talking about is that, you know, it goes back to the way humans and agriculture and a lot of things have always worked. Like you observe, you observe long enough and you figure out, okay, well, here's my solution for that. Right. And, and you see a lot of that happening and that makes sense. And so you do come away with this of an idea of like, okay, sure, a very, very biodiverse agricultural system where one particular, you know, single owner farm could have dozens of different types of animals and plants and it all kind of, you know, cycles within nature. And yes, there's a lot of work keeping that running, right? Because the one, their expert says it's more like surfing than anything else, right? But surfing is not just standing there. Like that is work right in within that activity. Like you have to put a lot of effort into surfing the wave. And so similarly, there's still a lot of effort. It's not just like, Oh, I can now sit back and watch it. It's going to do it itself. Right. Like yeah. there's still maintenance and there's still things you have to do. Um, and the coyote I, comes along and, and, and I starts I eating. I found people. that really fascinating, but there's so much else people? that I, I'm sorry, animals. I'm sorry. I, I, was, I meant to say animals. I was frustrated <laughs> with how much they left yeah, out. <laughs> I was very frustrated with how much they left out. Like they left out like what the investment was because that would be fascinating. Right. And they do a good job of showing how they really, really do remake the soil and turn the soil. And, and also based on what they've done, the way they are not troubled by the sudden torrential rains and the way it restores the aquifer, you know, I would have, I thought that this movie would have done a better job talking about the economics of, you know, for instance, like that, I I would have to, I'd be curious to know what the margins and economics of their particular farm is, as opposed to, you know, they, they kind of cast dispersions at all these, what they call monoculture farms where somebody raises just one crop. Mm -hmm. Right. But the thing is like, that's a business decision Mm -hmm. and that must be a high margin. Like it's not like somebody just decided, Oh fuck every other vegetable. I'm only growing (laughs) avocados. This was very, this is very ambitious. And even within like the fruit, they do like a wide variety of stone fruit, but there's stuff that they never touch on. Like, you know, they name. you know, some of the animals get names, right. And uh, the main mama pig, uh, like, like, right. (laughs) You know, they name that pig and, and he does talk about how they end up, you know, he says, you know, it's interesting because so many of these animals are going to be food, but you develop this relationship. And he only ever mentions that they Mm. never, uh, they never delve into that. And I kind of would have liked to see them explore that a little bit more. Um, this is where the story I've been excited to tell you. Tell us your farm story, Matt. So my grandparents (laughs) had, um, a farm of sorts in Mississippi when I was a kid. And they had, you know, they had, I don't know, like a hundred acres or so. And they really only just had some livestock and, uh, they had a couple of calves, a couple of cat. Yeah. A couple of calves. And so in, you know, for a couple summers we'd go down there and we'd take these big bottles and feed these calves, right. Um, dum, dum and cocoa. And you know, it was like, I'm seven, eight, like this is super fun. Uh, I go back one summer, I think I'm 10 and the calves aren't there anymore. And I had heard like, yeah, I guess they got sold. They went for, enough to live on a farm. <laughs> but, um, you know, I kind of knew empirically like, oh yeah, I guess they got sold for meat. So, you know, it's the summer and I'm rooting through the freezer. Oh no. And in the freezer, I see some, you know, I'm looking for ice cream and I just find the ice cream, but I also find some wrapped up cuts of meat um, that are labeled dum dum <gasps> flank oh. cocoa rump. And I was like, <gasps> dum dum is delicious. And so um, don't name your livestock. Uh, <laughs> just remember like, <laughs> like, Sorry. okay, I kind of got that like, okay, they're going to be eat. like, it was up into the, like I was, I was okay with the cows being sold for food. I was okay with the idea that we would have kept some of those cuts to eat. 
right up until I saw the names on the packages. Yeah. That was a little much. Yeah, let some stranger eat them. Yeah, exactly. Or at least like don't let, don't put the names on them. <laughs> yeah, right, or anthropomorphizing right. our lunch. Or at least get the get <laughs> different cuts off the same ones so that you don't have to name it. Like that was just weird. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it seems like a goop article, this movie. Kind of. You know what it is? It's like three episodes of an HGTV series uh, all right. strung together. Because there's really no great like narrative momentum. It's like right. this happened, then this happened, then this happened. Right. It's, it's, beautiful a, it's, shot. A, it's a lot of drone shots, like mm. overhead shots. It's a lot of slow motion of like hummingbirds flapping their wings. And it's, it's very pretty, but it, the way the beats, because this guy came from a television background, the mm-hmm. beats of it very much feel like reality TV to me. Right. You could easily imagine this being turned into a television series right. and it's an hour and a half long. All of these snails, what are we going to do? Right, so and like mm-hmm. they drag out the tension. Yeah. And then later Lots of reaction like, shots. Right. And then there's the charity fashion show. Oh, no, <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, it's it's fine. It feels like a lot of empty uplift to me. Yeah. And it's a little smug and it's a lot of voiceover. It's right. a lot of hand holding about the majesty of nature and how like we're changing the world. And anyway, again, you, like showing annoying. how you can do a farm and and use what's happening with the wildlife around you to, you know, to be a part of that cycle and keep things running. That's interesting, right? Does, but that's kind of all I got out of this. Anyway, I'm saying six. Yeah, I'm. I'm should uh, six. Yeah, okay, I'm, are you changing I'm, your I'm, number? Yes, okay, six. so we're saying six. It's at ninety six percent on the tomato meter for a long time. It's been at a hundred. Um, it, you know what? It's I, a, it's feel that, good. Right. Bring kids. Baby ducks are cute. The little piglets are cute. There's a lot of kid friendly stuff here. Yeah. Um, so I actually feel like that's how it functions best is for like little kids to but enjoy then the animals. Explain to your children the reality of migrant farm workers. Uh, yeah, that's a good point. And then like, what are they gonna do to the coyote that's eating all the livestock so um yeah i don't love this but it's uh, it's cute yeah, anyway um, right. so uh do your spiel i will thanks for watching <laughs> uh like this video subscribe to our youtube channel follow us at be fast all day on twitter instagram and facebook and uh go check out patreon.com slash be fast all day you might enjoy listening to us talk about tv shows like game of thrones and fossey burton and talking about movie trailers and other cool stuff that we'll be doing so uh Thanks. Do all that, please. And next week, we will talk about John Wick Chapter 3, which we all saw last night. And it's Parabellum. pretty gnarly. Um, also, on Monday, I will have out my latest a la carte interview. It is with YA author Julie Buxbaum, who I've known for a few years. She has a new book out. She's a really cool, smart woman, a former lawyer who realized she hated being a lawyer and decided to become a YA novelist. And Imagine she's now that. a bestseller. She's very successful. So that's on Monday. Um, thanks for sticking around with us. We've loved seeing you and hearing from you. So we'll talk to you again real soon. Bye.